first time you connect to SAP, you will need to log in. Well, first find your connection and then log into that connection. So here we've done our install based on the instructions found in the uh, installed documents. And we can see we have a list of connections with uh, us being a member of the um, SAP University Alliance. There are a lot of different connections. Most companies, if you logged in SAP, would only see one, maybe two, just depending on how many setups uh, that that particular company has for SAP. In our, our case, you will need to find the appropriate connection for your class. And uh, it will be listed under system or connection. All right. So once you find that, you double click on that and you connect into SAP. And you can see the name of the connection comes up and you can uh, verify that that's what you have. From this point, now you need to identify which client to uh, log into. And so you'll type in whatever your client number happens to be. And then your user ID for the classes I teach, it will be AIS dash sum two numbers. All right. So you'll find your user ID as provided by your instructor, however they uh, provide it to you. And then you'll key in your initial password to the SAP client. So in this case, if um, I, and you see right now, we've got a bunch of uh, dots covering up the password field. So this is an input mask that is actually a level of uh, security higher than your typical password where you see the dots or the asterisks show up as you type in each character. So the idea here is uh, that it is a little bit more difficult for someone shoulder surfing or just looking over your shoulder how long your password is, which of course is um, one way to uh, be able to crack a password a little quicker if you know exactly how long it is. All right, so we type in our initial password and we'll leave the log on language English, but you can change it to whatever you like. And then when I press enter, you see SAP pops up and says, okay, this is your first login. I need you to change your password. So at this point, you type in your new password and verify that. And now you get uh, your first login message, which you can click right through, and a little system message that tells you a little bit about what's going on with the system, any uh, urgent messages that you should know about the system. And at that point, I click continue, and I'm now logged in. So just a real quick view at the menu. You can see you've got a list of uh, menu items. Logistics, accounting, and you can see there are lots of different folders. And even as we get into financial accounting and general ledger, there are lots of different things that you can do in SAP. And this is typical of any ERP. It's big. There are lots of uh, things that you can do. It's, uh, it may have many modules that uh, are available. Uh, so in this case, you can see logistics, accounting, human resources, uh, just to begin with. And there are others that can be added as well. Most people, when they log into an ERP, won't see everything like we see right here. So if I'm a, uh, an accounts payable analyst, I would probably only see the items in accounting related to accounts payable, and maybe not even all of them, just those related to my job function. So that's something to uh, be aware of as you work your way through a system like this. We're going to take a look at just about all of it, but uh, that may not all be available to everybody in the organization. And that's actually a way of evaluating the controls that the organization has in place. What do people have access to when you consider controls related to separation of duties and what people should and should not have access to? So as we get down to individual screens, you can see EnergyL account document. That's the SAP 
journal entry screen. I can also type in the code to go to that screen right here in this white box. So if I were to go to extras and settings, I could do something called display technical names. And when I do that, I can now go to accounting, financial accounting, general ledger, document entry, and see here that the enter GL account document is the FB50 transaction. So if I double click on it, I go right into it and I can say, okay, let's go to the company I'm working with and start entering some journal entries. So your journal entry screen, you can see here, has the header information that you could key in, the date of the document, the posting date, uh, any reference information like JE01 that you might want to put in. The doc header text is a message that allows you to um, key in a description for your journal entry. And then you uh, have got a, a cross company. Uh, if you are doing a cross company journal entry, we won't do any of those in the, this particular example. And then down here, you can start entering your debits and credits for your journal entry and post when you're done. All right, but we won't do that right now. So I'm going to go back. Oops, I need to enter valid date. And now it says uh, data will be lost. Do you want to exit editing? Well, I haven't posted anything, but I do have a couple pieces of data in these fields and I will lose those. That's fine. Uh, if I had already posted a journal entry, then I still get this message, but the only data that would be lost is data that I haven't posted. So that would be sitting here on this screen unposted. Yes, I do want to exit editing and that takes me back to my main menu here. And just uh, to illustrate the ability to enter your transaction code or T code as I, it's often referred to, I could just type in FB50 right here and go to that same screen. All right. So at that point, I will go back out to my main menu. And we have logged into uh, SAP. Now we can get started doing what we need to do next.